Welcome, my friends. Welcome to the museum, my media museum. And we're picking up here with our recent additions from May 8, 2024. And we've got the Alan Parsons Project doing Damned If I Do, Damned If I Don't, But I Love You. And uh, again, all of these are just in beautiful condition, like the day they was made. Um, from this stack anyways, we'll get into some later stacks and some later episodes here. Because um, I've got uh, about four purchases over the month of May of 24 that I intend to film a series of here, put up on the channel. Um, but all these from this uh, black and red store, not too far here from my house, the, they're mostly all beautiful looking. Um, the B-side to that Dan If I Do is If I Could Change Your Mind. Now, uh, I got a little ahead of myself there, yammering on, and uh, forgot to uh, mention that this is the single version of Dan If I Do, running 3 minutes and 31 seconds. Uh, on the album, it's 4 minutes and 50 seconds, so this is an exclusive 45 uh, edit of the song that you're only going to hear if you get a hold of this piece of plastic. Vinyl, wax, whatever you want to call it. Um, so, next up, we've got Super Tramp. And I know I have had many copies of this one, uh, but I love Super Tramp and I absolutely love this song. Uh, Take the Long Way Home off of Breakfast in America, which was probably uh, their biggest selling album, uh, I would guess. Um, it was definitely a very, very successful album for Super Tramp back in 1979. Um, but I think I'm pretty positive I also have a picture sleeve of this that's previously been um, filmed and put up on the channel. Uh, surprisingly, the picture sleeve um, videos I've put up have gotten very few views. I, I don't understand why that is. I personally think picture sleeves are, are super cool, but uh, they don't seem to generate the interest that uh, just showing the 45s do. So, yeah, you know, if you do got an interest in them, please... Uh, watch those <laughs> there's plenty of them up on the on the channel already uh the b side of this uh varied uh from copy to copy um this one has rudy on the b side which is also a pretty well-known song um but some of the uh 45s that came out had from now on uh which was uh not as well known as Rudy, but you'll notice that that's from 1974, and we're back to A&M here with them promoting two albums on 145, uh, Rudy being from Crime of the Century, and Take the Long Way Home, obviously from Breakfast of America, which I already uh, talked about. I think from now on was on Breakfast in America too, but I'm not positive about that. I should have made note of that when I was looking these up. I did actually do a little research this time, believe it or not, um, in preparation for filming these uh, episodes. <coughs> Usually I'm pretty much more off the cuff, but I did kind of look some of these up, get a little few details. Um, nice price tag there from somewhere, $249. I remember seeing a lot of these. They'd pull those tabs off and keep them. Probably something to do with inventory control some way back in the old manual years before we had computers doing everything for us. And um, here's England Dan and John Ford Cooley. Um, might be a little bit difficult for you to see that because it's so colorful. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And I'd really love to see you tonight. England Dan and John Ford had quite a few. Um, I'd call them pop rock uh, hits through the uh, 70s, maybe up into the 80s. This was 1976 for I'd uh, really love to see you tonight. Uh, and the B-side of that being Nights of Forever Without You. Now, I'm, I don't know if this is a reissue uh, because I know both of those songs extremely well and it'd be really hard um, to tell. Oh, well, excuse me, I take that back. It's clearly stamped right there, oldies. So, uh, Big Tree oldies and two songs that you know extremely well. Um, this is a double A side. This is a reissue. This is something that's um, definitely been um, put out again. Uh, you can see just how beautiful a label that is, though. I really like the coloring. The subject matter is a little weird, um, but it is interesting that the bird has a note in its beak. If you didn't notice that, it's feeding its babies music. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. In a way. 
Next up, we've got uh, another one of my uh, favorite female vocalists. Um, you know, if you've been watching the channel and you've listened to a lot of these running commentaries I've made, you know I loved Karen Carpenter. She was probably my favorite female vocalist of all. But Carly Simon did a lot of really great stuff too. I really liked Carly. And you belong to me. The good hit for her. She did very well with that one. And the B side being in a small moment. And uh, that was both from 1978. So, yeah, I definitely did like the music of the 70s. 60s psych, 70s rock, and 80s metal. Uh, I was actually asked in a job interview uh, recently because uh, uh, I was looking for work, but I did finally find something. So I'll be getting back to work here real soon. But in a recent job interview, they, they, they had looked at the channel and checked out the channel because, hey, I got to say what I did for, you know, six months of my life when I wasn't working. And that was when I was building the channel and figuring out the camera and, and all this stuff and getting it going. So I do have it listed on my resume. And uh, they checked out. I said, well, what kind of music do you like? Well, obviously, they hadn't watched much of the channel. But that, that was my quick answer. I didn't have to think twice about that. 60s psych, 70s rock, 80s metal, and anything that sounds like it. <laughs> All right. So next up, we've got another female vocalist that I had a great appreciation for in the 70s. And that's Linda Ronstadt. Blah, 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 blah. Linda Ronstadt. Okay, excuse me. Got a little tongue tied there. Hurt so bad. Yeah, she had, and this is a spun gold, so this is clearly a reissue. So is the next one that I'm going to show you. I've got two Linda Ronstadt's here. They're both spun golds. So quite probably the B-side might be something you recognize, but it's not one that I recognize. How do I make you? So interesting. Usually spun golds are double A-sides or, you know, double hits of some sort. Um, but this is clearly marked as a B-side. Uh, it's from 1980 from the album Mad Love, and uh, the Hurt So Bad was from the same album uh, the same year. So I would have guessed if somebody had walked up to me on the street and said, hey, what year did Hurt So Bad by Linda Ronstadt come out? I would have definitely shot for the mid-70s. So a little surprised at 80, but, um, you know... It's, it's darn close to the same time period. So the next A-side for a spun gold Linda Ronstadt is Blue By You. And uh, that's just a beautiful song. She had a, a lovely voice, and it's a smooth... Uh, it's a ballad, yeah, um, but I really, really like that song. And uh, here we are in 1977, which is, you know, probably around the um, the peak of her career, uh, at least her early career, some people might dispute, you know, <laughs> when her most popular period was, but I would definitely say it was the 70s myself. Um, the album Simple Dreams. Uh, I don't remember which one it was that she had where she was in the roller skates, but I had a lot of friends that had that poster in the living room, <laughs> living room, on their bedroom walls. Um, you don't see uh, rock and roll posters in living room walls until you get to uh, young single males. <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I remember seeing that poster quite a bit, and that's one album cover that uh, really comes to memory when I think of Linda Ronstadt. Uh, the B-side of this one, It's So Easy to Fall in Love. So there again, like I said, the spun gold. Uh, I probably do know that um, How Do I Make You song, if I was to put it on. It's probably one that would ding, you know, the minute you hear a few notes. Um... That's the way it is sometimes. Titles don't necessarily click, but um, melodies certainly do. Um, so, anyways, I definitely thought this was worth getting because it's such a clean copy. And when you got a really smooth ballad like that with a really beautiful voice, uh, you don't want an old scratched up copy. And I wasn't sure if I had Blue By You on a good clean copy. So I do now, that's for sure. Oh. Next up, we've got one that uh, might surprise some people. Looks like I was uh, running on the ladies there for a bit. 
But uh, Brass in Pocket, I'm special by the Pretenders. And I know uh, my buddy Lance don't like the Pretenders none. <laughs> it's amazing. I've got quite a few friends that don't like Stevie Nicks, and I've always loved Stevie's voice as well. So that's another head scratcher as far as I'm concerned. But, uh, you know, we're all different. We all have different tastes, and uh, that's what makes the world go round. But, yeah, uh, Brass in Pocket was a song that I did like. 1979, uh, Pretenders. Uh, they didn't have a lot of stuff that I was a huge fan of. I can't say I'm a, I'm a real big fan of, of her or that band. But I did like Brass in Pocket, and I did want to have a nice, good, clean copy of it that I could throw on and surprise the wife with. Plus... Plus, <laughs> Space Invader being on the B side. Uh, some copies have different B sides on this one too. Uh, some of them had Swing in London, which was an instrumental, or uh, Nervous But Shy. Um, neither of those songs were on the album, but this Space Invader was. So I guess, technically, if you're going to get Brass in Pocket on a 45, you want to get it with one of those alternate B sides that was not an album track. Um, swing in London or Nervous But Shy. So that's something that in the future I will keep an eye open for. And if I run across a Pretender's Brass in Pocket that has one of those other songs on it, I'll snag it simply because of the fact that uh, they were non-album tracks. Now I'm not sure if they got added to any later um, releases that they did. I seem to remember they had an album called The Singles. Uh, quite possibly one or both of those uh, tracks got released on CD at some point. But um, at the time, they weren't on the album. But Space Invader was, and just being a big science fiction fan, and, and you know, I played plenty of Space Invaders as well, uh, just the title alone, this would have, would, have been, would have been something I would have picked up, even if it didn't have Brass and Pocket on the other side. So, that wraps up part two of the recent editions, May 8, 2024. Um, be sure to come on back. I'll have some yes to show you next.